The Lone Star Block is one of the most recognized patchwork patterns, yet many quilters steer away from this classic design due to the difficult Y seam piecing. Welcome to Nancy Zeman TV, where I'm excited to share with you how to create a supersized Lone Star patchwork table topper or wall quilt with only straight seams. The straight edges all fit together like an easy puzzle. I'd like to show you how. Let's take a close-up look at this Lone Star tabletop, or we could use it as a quilt. The center of the piece has a very dramatic size, 36 inches for the Lone Star block. And as we look into the corners, we've added borders, and then each corner has a portion, a fourth of the Lone Star. Now traditionally, Lone Star designs are very tricky to make because of Y seams. Y seams mean when the square meets the intersection and that's a Y seam. And I'll show you what I mean as we look at the cut pieces. When we create this quilt, we're going to work with a 36 inch block as I mentioned for the center and, and the 12 inch for the corners and this represents the 12 inch corners and the traditional Y seams are with the diamond shapes, half square triangle at the top and we have squares at the corner and when these seams are sewn here's where the Y seams occur. Many times I have ripped and re-sewn and ripped to get it just right. Well not this way. We're going to have all straight seams and I'd like to show you how this is created. We're going to work with a product that was developed with Clover and I was fortunate to work with them on this and it's called the Trace and Create Quilt Templates. There are three templates to work with the Lone Star. You place the three templates together, lay them down on the table so that the A, B, and C in the corners all line up in alphanumeric order. And each of the templates is die cut for th four different sizes from traditional 12 inch, 24 inch, 32 inch, and 36 inch. All three templates are marked in the same manner. And then it tells us what strip width to cut in order to create the shape. For the 36 inch smallest half square triangle, we're going to cut a strip that's eight and a quarter inches. You do the same thing on the B triangle, B template, which is the diamond. 36 inch, we'd cut an eight inch, and we're also going to cut 12 inches. And the 12 inch Lone Star, you would cut a three inch strip. I think you get the idea. You crosswise cut the strips of fabric, and then we're going to trace and create, just the way the name implies. Now after cutting the strips, I like to spray starch, crisp, make the fabric very crisp. You can spray starch it before cutting or after cutting the strip. One of my favorites is to use Mary Ellen's Best Press. It's a clear starch alternative. You can use the, the starch of your choice. So I have this cut for the smallest of triangles, half square triangles, and I'm going to align it so that I'm matching the edges. Straight edge, and I'm going to trace not cut with a rotary cutter just yet, trace the diagonal. Then rotate, align the edges, the trace line, and then trace the side. And I think you get the idea. You just keep on going until you've traced the number of pieces given on the guide sheet. Keep on keeping on. After you've done the tracing, then you're going to cut them out. Use a rotary cutter, ruler, and mat. Just follow the lines and do the cutting. And follow this and cut. After cutting all the half square triangles, you're going to do the same thing for the diamond shape. The diamond shape I've cut already into the 8 inch strip. And I've started to work on this 8 inch strip, so we'll just continue to work on it. And I've started to cut it but I would place the diamond shape on the fabric and then trace. Continue it along, aligning the trace line and the template and trace, and then just do the cutting. Then the last thing to do is to cut the larger half square triangle. Same process. It's not too difficult to figure out. You're just tracing the size and cutting along the trace marked. Now, I like to again lay out my templates because this gives me the sequence. And I'll place my cut fabrics on top. 
I'll have eight cut fabrics for the diamond and you can check the instructions again the number that you'll need again the same number this is A, B, and C and you'll need four of these A, B, and C so I'm going to count off four and I'm going to lay four of these onto my cutting mat and I'm going to transfer these in just a few minutes to the sewing machine. I'm going to do the same for template A and C, the corners. I'm going to transfer four over and lay them just the way I had them on the table. Now there are four left. And the four left are going to be the mirror image. So what was in position A, I'm going to place in position C. And what was in position C, I'm going to place in position A. So it's the exact opposite of what I have. And now it's time to do the stitching. I've transferred my board to my sewing machine area and so show you the simple sewing techniques creating this Lone Star, all straight seams. Here we have the pieces cut out from template A, B, and C, as you saw earlier. And I'm simply going to meet right sides together, meeting A to B, and align the very tips of those two pieces together and as I match them as they go down you'll see that the piece A overlaps so that there's just an exactly a fourth of an inch seam allowance. Because we've used a lot of starch on these or, or the sizing on these it, I really haven't found it necessary to do pinning but you may want to pin if that makes you feel more comfortable. Now I'm working with the Serenade Baby Locks new quilting machine and I have engaged the PDQ. If you're wondering what's PDQ, it's the precision dual feed quilting mechanism that feeds the top layer and the bottom layer at the same rate. Ideal for quilting, especially when you're working with bias seams. So this is the perfect project to do the feature. I have the quilting foot on my machine and going to guide the fabric along the edge. But what's interesting is that this little V shape is exactly a fourth of an inch. So as I do the stitching, it aligns right with the edge of my fabric and the edge of my foot. So just stitch using your traditional quilt length. And I like to have about 10 to 12 stitches per inch. Make sure these edges are matching. And as I get to the tip, you'll see that everything comes out just perfectly. Now you could chain stitch all of the other A, B components together. I'm just going to show you a complete component. So I'm going to cut the thread and then do some pressing. For this particular grouping, I like to press the seam allowances toward the middle section, toward the diamond section. If you'd like, you could kind of set the seam, press it flat. And granted, I'm pressing over my pieces, but it still works fine. And then press toward the center diamond block. After you've added this A and B together, then you're going to add C to the new components bright sides together. Now you align the top edge. Notice how this aligns. The top edge of the first triangle and the second triangle align and then at the very end it overlaps by a fourth of an inch. It's really quite magical. The templates allow you to have the design come out exact. It's important too is during the cutting process to have precision but it certainly pays off for this easy sewing. And now we're going to do the second row of stitching. Just again using the presser foot and engaged the PDQ, the dual feed that feeds the top and bottom layer at the same rate. And as I come to the end of the seam, I'm ending exactly at the V shape. Again, you would chain stitch all of the four pieces together. And now do one more set of pressing. Press again, you can press it flat. I'm just going to save some time and press the seam allowances toward the diamond shape. After you've created four of these, then you're going to bring the other section of fabric pieces to the sewing machine and sew the mirror image so that what was in the A position is in the C and C is in the A. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Here we have a section that is A is now C and C is now A. And when I put these together, right sides together, I would now press the seam allowances toward or away from the center block. This one be away from the other block. And I'll show you this on the finished because now we're going to sew these two samples together. When you meet the mirrored images together, 
One seam allowance is pressed downward, the other one is pressed upward, and you can nest the seam allowances together. And then sew a straight seam. Sew this long seam together. And when you do this, you've created a fourth of your block. This block shows that seam stitched. And you can see that where you normally would have a Y seam, it's a straight seam allowance. You're going to create four of these, four supersized for the 36 inch Lone Star blocks, and then for the corner of our table topper or wall hanging, you're going to create another four shorter seams, but the same technique. And now I'll show you how to lay this out. I have the squares ready to sew together, the four quarters of the Lone Star. I've laid out this 36 inch to be block, placing sides together. You'd meet right sides together, stitch the seam, and then stitch the halves together, as you can see. Now for the 12 inch blocks, you'd create the 12 inch blocks just in the same manner, with the exception you're not going to sew them together at this point. We're going to keep these 12 inch blocks separate, and they're going to be used as cornerstones. Cut a strip of fabric for a border the same width or the cut size of the cornerstone. And this is going to be sewn to the border and in placed in each corner. Let's take a look at the finished table topper or wall hanging so you can see how it's been stitched together. You could use your favorite method of stitching, of quilting. We've used batiks, four different colors of batiks, the background fabric, and then of course the cornerstones. On Nancy Zeman TV, you'll find yardage be able to print it out so you know exactly how much yardage you'll need to make a table topper like this. You're not limited just to this color combination or this number of fabrics. Here's another color option. This color option is more fall tone with sage greens, rusts, and deep forest greens. A very pleasant combination. Or you could consider using two different colors for the background. This block shows a different fabric in template A and template C. And then, you, of course, you can see the diamond shapes. Another option, not using a solid fabric for the background, but rather a calico print. A traditional Lone Star look, perhaps, and then two colors for the diamond areas. So you can see the Lone Star is a very versatile, extremely easy quilt pattern to put together with PDQ, precision dual feed quilting, and the quilt templates. It's a wonderful pair, fast to sew together. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to create a supersized Lone Star block without Y seams. It's a streamlined quilt design with great impact. To learn more about the products used in this video, along with my favorite sewing machines, visit your participating Baby Lock dealer. Tell them Nancy sent you.